Hi, it's Leo from Me by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. Today I'm going to show you another one of IOG's um, new creative products um, for the spring. This one is called Viridis. It's a mold and it is really nice. It's got some little bits in it because I've already used it. <laughs> so this is the mold. And today's, this little project is how to update a lampshade. So I'm just going to set this to the side and I'm just, in case you've never ever seen anybody cast an IOD mold, I'm just going to show you how. So here I have um, a release agent, which I'm just using corn flour. Um, and I'm just going to put it into one of the molds, making sure that I've got it. And I've got my clay here. And I think to tackle this one, it's probably best if you just kind of do a sort of kind of long shape like this. And what I tend to do is kind of get it into the sort of space where I want it to go first. And I always kind of just flip my mold as I go, turn it from side to side, try and get rid of some of the excess whilst pushing down into the mold, because this is quite a big one. Get rid of the excess here. And then when I get this far, I quite like to go towards me first. Try not to pull on the mould like that because you'll lose some definition. If there's any little parts, just fill them in. Take off the excess from this side without trying to pull on the mould. And pretty much... And get them there so I can. You want it as flat as possible because then it's going to adhere to the surface nice. Get rid of your excess mold and then just flip it over and just at this point in time try not to pinch it because it'll and just kind of if it's a big one like this, kind of coax it out a little bit. Um, uh, it's always a little bit easier if you kind of like if you've got a big one just to it out. So this is how the leaf parts look. Now, as I said, I've already used it and I've already cast these. I cast these earlier on. What I do is I cast them, I get a mist and spray, I mist them and I put the plastic back over the top of it so that they're sitting on plastic and if I plastic over the top of them, it stops the, um, the moisture coming out of them and that way you can still use them as you go. If you feel like there's any parts that need a little bit of clean up, you can get a clay tool and do this if you want. So I'm just going to put this alongside. In fact, I'll just use this one and we'll use it straight away. So I'll just move my mould. And this is my victim. Now, this lampshade, I once threw some paint at it and it didn't go any further. I planned to go back and do something with it and never ever did. So it's not going to be this colour when we're finished, but... It's a good place to start, so I'm just going to start here so that you can see on camera how I do this. I'm just going to put some glue down on here and work from a splodge of glue as opposed to... Now, sometimes I use a brush, sometimes I use my finger, but because this is quite a nice big wide mould, I'm just going to use my finger. Now, you have to make sure that you go right to the very edges and all across your mould. Do not just scrimp and just go round the edges and leave it at that. You need to do the whole thing. Um, try not to put too much heavy glue at the edges because that's the little seep out. But this is all going to get painted, so we're not really too worried about that. Making sure that you've got your whole mould right to the very end and every edge covered. And I want to have this... I'm thinking here. Now, will the moulds be okay on this lampshade? Absolutely, they'll be fine. But I would do them and let this completely dry before you start working on it. I think it sometimes helps if you look at your work from the side and then you can make sure 
that you've got it all patted down appropriately. Um, right, so that's one on. And I really think it's up to you how you kind of put it together. I mean, I'm thinking maybe doing something like this. So I'll get one of these branches. And again, just covering it up. And I mean, I'm not going to make you watch me do this whole lampshade. But um, it's good to kind of get a rough idea of where I think I might go with it. And I think what I'd like to do is maybe just take, I had one here that one of these um, branches that kind of broke. So I think I'm going to add a half of one. Now, if you were working on something that was much bigger, you would be, you could use a full one, but I'm just going to use a half of one and kind of join this to here. And then I've got like, sets of two leaves and sets of three leaves and single leaves on their own which gives you plenty of scope to kind of design how you want this to be so if i kind of put that on here like there and join there together i can come along with the single leaves and make a third one on here so that it doesn't look like it's just coming from nowhere and maybe you could put some on your um, branch coming, coming from here and maybe another one. But you, you understand the concept. You just kind of, you're mixing and matching until you get something that, um, something you like. Now, once I've finished, I'm going to get a little brush and just clean up clean up some of my glue around the edges. So moving on to here, let's do the next part and then after that I'll just go away and do it. I just don't want you to be kind of lost and thinking, well, I didn't really see enough of how to put that one together. Let's do this branch coming from here this time, pulling it that way. My design's gonna be coming, nothing coming from the top, all coming, I'm sorry, coming from the bottom. All the design work gonna come from the top and maybe one of the big branches again and you can half these you don't need to put it on as big as this i mean i quite often kind of cut molds and shape them to what i want i mean you can do whatever you want if you think it's maybe too big for your design then just go with something then um, half i think it's going to have quite a lot of impact on my lampshade because it is quite a big detailed mold and it's easy to cast because it's nice and big just be careful when you're flipping it out. And now flip this over and I think I need to do something like bending it a little bit there. Something like this. Again, I'm just kind of checking that I've got it. My big splodges of glue. But it's all adhered to the, the shade. And that just involves touching it without being too hard on it. I'm going to take that other piece of broken branch and I'm just going to have it coming from here, down here. And um, where's my... Whoops. I think I'm going to cut one of these and I think I'm going to cut it here. So I've got this part here this time, which I can put here. So it's okay to cut them. I think I probably did about the shade. I want the shade to be covered in mold. So I really did quite a few um, castings. This is really nice. It's a nice therapeutic, therapeutic one, this one. like something to come a wee bit further down here. So again, I'm going to cut one of these branches. I can really imagine there's some furniture. Mm. No, I don't want that. I think I'm just going to have a single leaf that's maybe coming down further than everything else. Yeah, and another one. I just want this one branched. I don't want them all the same height, so I'm I'm kind of 
supplement and what's what we've got here to make it a little bit longer. I'm going to have one coming out the other side as well. So this is really what I'm all I'm going to be about. I'm just going to be putting these on here in a pleasing pattern the way I want them. And then we'll let it dry overnight. And once it's dry, I might get Martin to come back at the end just to have a do a quick crunch round to see how it looks before it dries overnight. And then we'll get to painting it and making it beautiful tomorrow. So the shade has been drying overnight. Uh, some parts are really quite dry. Other parts are still, you know, soft in the middle. I'm not really an advocate of painting moulds when they're wet, but this is crusty enough that I'm okay. I'm proceeding with caution. Um, I'm first of all going to paint the negative spaces before I paint the moulds, which are the positive spaces. And I'm going to be using a sort of purpley colour. So I've got on my mix mat here, I've got a pink and I've got a blue and I'm going to be using quite a lot of water for this. Um, and I'm just going to mix it in shades as I go. And I'm going to start painting my shade. There is no right or wrong way to do this. I just wouldn't apply paint too heavily onto your project. Um, you need quite a bit of water um, to do this. And I'm just going to paint in all the negative spaces right up to my moulds and so that we can paint those in next. Now, this is going to take a little bit of time. Can you see like that? That's a bit more pink there. So I'm kind of varying my colours. So kind of alternating with touches more of blue or touches more of the pink. But I'm going to go, I'm going to do this now. And then when this is dry, we shall get to um, painting in all these lovely moulds. Okay, so I've done all the purple and now I'm going to start painting in my moulds. I'm using various different shades of greens. Initially, um, I might come back with an even brighter green um, once I've painted this in. And this just takes time. And I think one of the main things I would say about doing something like this is pick the right brush for the job. Don't pick a brush that's too big. Remember the side, you have to look at it from all angles. It takes a little bit of time. There's no way that you can rush this. You just have to kind of like put an audio book on and just sit and get the job done. Um, it takes a bit of time. Uh, this is an absolute beautiful mould. It is lovely and I can imagine doing lots of things with this. Um, I think if you're a furniture artist like me, because I very, I, I do do smalls, but um, obviously I'm looking at this in relation to furniture and I'm thinking, oh, lots of chinoiserie pieces I think could be made with this beautiful mould. Um, it's lovely, it casts really well. It's, it's a nice one. It's a good one to have in your armory, I think, um, if you're looking to buy iodine moulds. I think this one is a is an absolute stonker of a mould. I'm not doing the branches right now, and I can show you this because I've done, I've done the other side. This is how it's going to look. And I can see there's some little parts. Even this is what I mean. You have to keep going back around it all until you get it just the way you like it. The branches are going to be gold and it's going to have some gold detail, but I'm going to come back, I think, with a sort of more chantreuse sort of colour of green onto some of this as well. But this is this is where we're at with it so far. So it's just a bit of a labour of love at this stage. And you just have to kind of like take your time. And uh, as I said, you're going to have to keep flipping it around and around and around because each time you look at it, you'll see another part that you haven't quite got. Uh, it's, I'm going to be quite forgiving on myself on this because I'm going to be putting some gold around the edges. So although I'm being quite, you know, precise, I'm still kind of thinking the gold will pick up anything that I'm, I'm not. So this is where you need to get to next. Okay, so what I've got now is I've got some gold um, acrylic. And all I'm doing is... I can show you these these ones here that I've done. So I'm just painting in the branches now in gold. So let's just pick a branch. Sorry, Matt, and I can't right. make up my mind which way I want to go. Um, so the good thing about my gold is it's water-based, so I can water it down. And I sometimes think when you're doing a mould, a little bit of water on your brush is quite a good way. It helps it flow and move nice. Um, and I think my gold as well also looks 
just as good as some things as gold leaf so it's a nice bright gold and it's not too cheap and it brings out iodine molds beautifully so i'm painting these in gold next and we'll come back with the next part the next part i'm going to be adding a little bit of a brighter green onto my because there's going to be tiny a little initial tidy ups once we get to this sort of stage and I'll be kind of coming back and tidying any little bits up. Because once I've got the brighter green on, I'm going to bring out the mould a little bit more by putting some gold around the edges just to make those pop on the purple. And now what I'm doing is I'm just doing what I said I was going to do, which is coming back with a dry brush and some of this sort of chantreuse colour and just making everything pop a little bit more. Now, the inside I'm actually going to gold leaf so that the inside of the lamp shade is gold. Um, but we're getting to the point now where I'm going to add the gold around the leaves and um, we'll just get one done so that we can, I can show you what I'm going to do next. And then it's just a quick sweep, tidy up, make sure none of this paint is on the shade where you don't want it. I think this colour will really make it pop because it, it's opposite in the colour wheel, you know, that sort of... Well, when you get into purples and um, this sort of colour, I think it really kind of makes it makes it work. Um, putting it on heavy in some areas and lighter in the other. And it's a really good way, once you've painted your moulds in, to kind of put all the sort of, almost the definition back in, into your moulds by doing this. Um, it's quite often a technique I use um, when I'm painting moulds. And I mean, this has been a slight labour of love, but, and I'm sure, you know, maybe you were thinking maybe more sort of spring-like colours, but I'm all about the colour and I wanted a bougie sort of, real sort of opulent looking shade as opposed to going with the, the whites and the creams and the, all of that. Now, so... If I pick this particular leaf here, this one here, Martin, have you got quite a good shot of this one? No. Right. So, I've dry brushed this one to the way I want it. And then what I'm going to do is, if it's okay, I've got some of my gold on my tiny, it's a small axe brush. What I'm going to do is, I thought I might just kind of touch around the outside of the mould just like that so for example here just round almost the exterior edge i think you can probably go maybe a little bit heavier on the ends of the leaves as well if you wanted to and i'm just going to make all of these now pop with the gold so i'm going to get on and i am going to now make that happen Okay, so I've done all the painting and everything around the front. I have given the inside one coat of gold and I'm about to give it another coat of gold in a minute. So while that's drying, I'm going to finish this off with a little bit of trim and I can show you the shade as we go around. So I've already folded the edges over on the trim. Um, so that it gives a nice neat edge and this will just finish the shade in a really nice way and that way you can have a good look at it as a toilet around making sure that I've got this kind of reasonably straight on the top I'll twirl it in a minute Martin That's right. I always think things like trim always finish it off and if you've gone to the bother of putting all these molds on and painting them and everything else you may as well finish it off quite nicely oh, quite right yeah the finishing parts are the nice parts so once i've done this i'm just i'm not gonna bother filming me doing the inside with a secondary coat of the gold i will get to staging this up so that you can see this beauty i'm also going to put trim down this bottom edge as well just to kind of really give it a little bit more opulence but this is it 
and it wasn't very difficult or tricky to do. So how to upgrade an old lampshade with IOD moulds and just some paint and a little bit of trim down. And it looks lush. It does, it looks very bougie. Yeah. I'm enjoying it. Okay, so... See you at the staging. See you at the staging. So that's where our little craft project for IOD using the new Veridis um, mould. I used clay to apply um, my mould, um, cast them, put them on my shade um, and then painted the shade, a lovely shade of blue and sort of capri pink which made a purple. Painted my moulds with varying shades of green, added some gold, added some trim, painted the inside gold. And voila, an afternoon's project to really vamp up and bougie up your lampshade. Mm -hmm.